um, history chat for the year. And our guest speaker is John Sands. He's a retired barber. In fact, his uh, barber shop was right next door to this building. And uh, it looks so better now than it did when it was my barber. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn the program over to John. Uh, I bought that from Mabel Murphy in 1964, March of 64. And uh, I just tell him, Derek, that uh, when I went down to the polls to vote that year, the primary election, uh, I walked in and I asked for a Republican ballot, naturally. And uh, <laughs> Mabel, Mabel was the inspector, and she came unglued. She said, if I'd have known you was a Republican, I'd have never sold you that bar. <laughs> I mean, she went down through me like a dose of reds and salt. <laughs> she had her finger in my face and just, it, it, it almost scared me. I, I, I came close to asking for a Democrat ballot. <laughs> <laughs> but not really that close. <laughs> and, um, so, uh, you, you remember the song, Don't Let Your Baby Grow Up to Be Cowboys? Mm -hmm. well, Nowadays, don't let them grow up to be barbers. <laughs> uh, the barbering profession is, is soon becoming a thing of the past. At one point, uh, I think we had, uh, when I was in business, we had five barbers in town. Now we're down to one. Uh, Plymouth, I think, had uh, either eight or ten, and I think they're down to three now. And, uh, and Bourbon doesn't have any. Uh, Argus, Argus has one, and I don't know what, what's going on in Culver, but it's it's not not what it used to be. Uh, with as far as the barber shop, I tried to make it a fun place. We we had good times, and and uh, uh, I ran baseball pools and football pools and basketball pools. 500-mile race pools. Um, we never got arrested for, for, the, for the gambling side of it. Uh, maybe it was because I had Tyson on the baseball pool. <laughs> but uh, we we had we, we we just did everything we could to make it fun. Um, in fact, one of my customers here several months ago reminded me about a sign I had in the barber shop. And I, I hesitated whether I should tell this or not, but, but the sign said, we've upped our effort, now up yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, uh, I, I had people ask me about that sign. They said, well, what's, what, what, you, what about that? I said, well, you interpret it any way you want to. I said, yeah. But uh, we, 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 just, we just did a lot of things to have a good time. And, and, uh, <clears throat> one of the things we did several times during the summer when we had some real warm weather and the sidewalks were, were, were hot out there, I'd get up a little bit earlier in the morning and I'd, I'd glue down a quarter or a half a dollar or a dime <laughs> to the sidewalk. <laughs> and these kids would come along and they'd try to kick it off with their flip flops and their, their, their tennis shoes and there was no way they could ever, ever get that coin off of it. Because we, we glued it down pretty good. And we... Uh, but the next day when I came in, it was gone. So they brought it back home and uh, got a chisel and a hammer and got it off of there. But, uh, but uh, it, uh, it, was, it was something else. And, you know, raising, raising prices was always a, a, a struggle. Uh, you, you, you catch a lot of flack when you were raising prices in the barber shop. And I had one gentleman come in, and he was giving me the business about it. And and I said, I was we were raising up to three dollars that uh, and I 
I said to him, I said, well, are you a union person in your shop? And he said, yes. He said, I, I, I belong to union. I said, well, if you're unhappy with $3, I said, I'm going to join the barber's union. You'll pay six then. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that kind of kind of cooled that <laughs> conversation down real quick. But uh, I had one, another guy give me the business. And back then, we, we, on Fridays, we opened at 8 o'clock, and it wouldn't be anything any out of it. Ordinary of being there till eight or till nine, nine thirty in the evening, and so I he was giving me the business about it. And I said, "Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do." I said, "I'll bring in a wash tub, and you stand in that wash tub while I'm standing behind the barber chair." And I said, "If I step away from the barber chair, you can step out of the wash tub." And I said, at the end of the day, if you can't take it, I said, you match what's in the drawer. And I said, if you can stand there during all that time, I said, you can have what's in the drawer. He thought about it, but he didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but uh, oh, some of the things uh, I had, I had a, a young boy that had come in, I, I suppose he was maybe 10. 11 years old, and he uh, got through cutting his hair, and he said, John, I'm supposed to call my mom. And I said, okay, go ahead. So he went over to the phone, and he took it off the, the uh, holder, and he got to looking at the wall, and I, I didn't know what he was looking at. I had some phone number drawers up there, and uh, um, he said, what's this White House phone number? <laughs> and I said, well, I said, you know what the White House is? And he said, yeah, but I can't believe that's, that's, that's the president's number, the White House number. I said, call it. <laughs> so he, he punched it in, and he got the White House. And, and he, of course, I'm only hearing one side of the conversation, and he, he then relayed what the receptionist told him. And uh, he said, uh, I'd like to speak to the president. <laughs> <laughs> and the receptionist said, well, the president's pretty busy, young man. Is there something that, that I can pass on to him? And uh, he said, no, no, I, I, I just wanted to speak to him. So, so that was one of the highlights of that, that particular day. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> We, we always had loafers in the barber shop, and, and Larry reminded me of it when he came in. He, he talked about the three amigos, and it was Walt Thompson from the newspaper, um, Lex Clark, the attorney, and um, Scotty. Scotty, Carl Scott. My my good friend Carl Scott, he, he sold shoes out of my barber shop sometimes, I think. But uh, we we always had a loafer in there. Sometimes I had more loafers than I had customers. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, was, it was because we were having a good time doing what we were doing. And uh, uh, bringing up Scotty's name, it reminds me of one story with, with Carl. I had, um, we, 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 we discussed politics, Carl and I did, and he was obviously a Democrat, strong Democrat, and it was during the Carter administration, I think, and that was when interest rates went to 16 or 18 percent, and Scotty and I got into our argument, and I was cutting this gentleman's hair. I didn't know who he was. He wasn't a local. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, we'll entertain him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so Scotty and I really got into it. And, uh, and I finished that gentleman, and then I cut Carl's hair. And so 
after it was over, Carl and I went down to Maryland's restaurant for lunch. <laughs> and uh, we walked in, and this gentleman was in there having his lunch, and he said, you know, he said, I thought you two guys were going to kill each other. Right? <laughs> and here we are going to lunch together. <laughs> and I, I said, well, you know, it's a weekly thing. I mean, it's sometimes <laughs> bi-weekly. But uh, we, we always had a good time. I mean, I, and, and I, I had a few important customers that came through my barber shop, other than my loafers and uh, the regular customers. I mean, uh, naturally, I got Doc Bones here when he was a doctor, when he was a representative, and when he was a, 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 a governor. Uh, I've got Bob Orr, Governor Bob Orr's here, uh, Senator Dick Luger's here, uh, Senator Dan Quayle, before he became vice president. Uh, he didn't come back after he was vice president. I don't know if I gave him a bone there. You know, I, I, I was, was a very fortunate individual uh, as far as the politics and everything goes. Uh, Doc Bowen opened the door for me for, for many things. And uh, granted, I had, I had to step through the door, but uh, I, I could never have done it without uh, Doc opening the door for me. He, uh, he first asked me when, uh, in 19, I know it was 1969, uh, we had, Jackie and I had our daughter down at the, the uh, office, that's when he was down in the basement, the big house, and he, uh, he said, I got something you might be interested in, and I said, what's that? And he said, well, Roy Kaufman's given up his council seat. Uh, this year, and he said, I thought maybe you'd enjoy running for county council. But uh, eventually, uh, I, I did, and I ran for that. Uh, I, I served six terms on the county council, 24 years. Uh, the county council is the budgeting arm of county government. Uh, and from there, I went to the recorder's office and served two terms in the county recorder's office. Uh, and then I served one term as county commissioner. And I evidently, by that time, the consistory was, uh, um, they, they must have been getting tired of me because they didn't reelect me for commissioner. But it was time I got out of it anyway. I mean, uh, you, you, you make, you make a, a few enemies along the way, and, and uh, um, my outspokenness probably upset more people than, than what it did in my favors, uh, evidently because they voted me out. But uh, it was time I got out. Uh, when <coughs> and. I, I, I go back to when we bought the barber shop, and, and Mabel Murphy, she she really lined me up that day. I mean, it was it was something else. Uh, I went in there and asked for the Republican ballot, and boy, she she went down through me like something else. And but uh, in 1978, Doc Bowen and Bill G, they called me and wanted me. So we met down at Maryland's restaurant for coffee. I had no idea what was coming. And uh, they said, we'd like you to run for party chairman. And I said, oh boy. Uh, and I thought about it maybe 20 seconds. And uh, Bill said, no, he said, you understand? He said that, that you, you, you have to take care of the license branch too. And I, 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 that's, that's not my ballpark. And uh, I said, I'm, I'm not of the, the, the temperament to stand there and take the crap that people hand out in the license branch. So, but my wife, she was sitting there with me and she said, John, if you want to do this, she said, I'll run the license branch. Well, she got me off the hook. 
and and I did decided to run for the license branch and and I was in the county chairman's position for 21 years and I had a full head of hair when I started. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I not only was the county chairman for 21 years, I, I was the second and third congressional district because we had the redistricting <clears throat> in, in, in that period of time. I was the vice chairman of the third district and then when we went, got redistricted back into the second district, I ran for county, uh, district chairman and I was elected uh, congressional district chairman and uh, I, uh, I served in that position for several years and I was, it, it ended up, I mean it put me on the state uh, Republican Party uh, committee and it was a position I served on for 10 years uh, when uh, when you're uh, district chairman or vice chairman, you're, you're a member of the, the state Republican committee. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, I, I wore many hats, and here again it goes back to when Doc opened the door for me to get involved in the, the political thing. Um, I, I was the president of the Association of Indiana Counties, and that meant many trips to uh, Indianapolis, and also trips to uh, D.C. And uh, it was it was quite an experience. Uh, uh, one time they made the arrangements for me, and I didn't go to, didn't fly out of Indianapolis. I flew out of South Bend, and they uh, they had me a transfer of planes at Detroit and then into D.C. And they had a, a wheelchair for, lined up for me. I didn't need a wheelchair, not at that point in time. And they sent this little gal that probably weighed 95 pounds to push his wheelchair and this big, big lug through the airport. And uh, I, I told her, I said, this is the biggest job you'll have today. I said, you won't push a bigger one today. Out. She, she, did, she, just, she just smiled. And, uh, but there were so many things that, uh, that I was able to do because of that situation. You, 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 many of you may know that the governors give away the Sagamores of the Wombash. Uh, it's it's one of the Adam boys that, 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 that they do, and I I, I got them from of course from Doc, uh, got one from Bob Orr, and uh, I got one from Evan Bay. Uh, and there's no truth to the rumor that that one hangs upside down <laughs> in my in my office, but, but it, it does hang there with the others and and. Uh, one of the other uh, things that I, I'm, I'm very proud of, I was able to cast the Electoral College votes for Ronald Reagan and also uh, George H.W. Uh, Bush. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I, I was, was one of those guys you hear about when they start counting. Uh, electoral votes and everything, and uh, and they're 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 still at you when on election day or uh, uh, electoral college day. They, I, I I had phone call want me to switch to to I forget who Bush was running against them, but uh, anyway the, the, the they were wanting me to switch to to vote for the, the opposition, and of course there's no way that I was going to do that. Uh, the, um, there, I was involved with the county government, and uh, uh, in my tenure as a county employee, 
we built two jails, uh, a county building, an addition onto the courthouse, an addition on the county home uh, building, and uh, the uh, on on the second jail, uh, I was not commissioner when when construction started, but I I did find the ground for the present jail and their facilities out there today. I, I got tired of, of hearing about the reports on how many uh, prisoners we are over the limit and everything. So when I left the commissioner's meeting one day, I told a friend of mine, Cliff Allen, the Democrat, I said, Cliff, I'm going to go find a, uh, the place we're going to build a new jail. I said, I'm, I'm tired of this. this, this. And it took me probably driving around the county um, several hours, and, and I come up with a piece of ground that, that this current jail sets on. And uh, it uh, it was it was quite an experience to, to 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 go through those those building projects and everything. Uh, I as county chairman and and district chairman and, and office holder, <coughs> I always practice the theory, it's not a sin to have the stick, but it is if you don't use it to help your people. And uh, a few examples, uh, you remember the blizzard of 78, I got a call from Ted Graverson, lived out on Fort Road, and, and he said, John, he said, I got a problem, he said, if I don't get a gas truck in here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose my hogs. And he said, can you help me? And I said, we'll get it in there. So I called the highway department, I called one of my fellow commissioners first, and uh, or fellow councilman at that point in time. And I said, we need to to get a gas or get a plow in there so that we can save the hog operation with the Ted's out there. And, and uh, I got back to Ted and told him, we're going to get it done. I said, I just need you to coordinate it between your gas company and the highway garage. And uh, he did. We got the gas in there. We saved his home population that day. And uh, one of the one of the others was was quite a experience, and that's the Lake of the Woods sewer project. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, it was much needed. It was much needed, and uh, uh, the establishment of the Lake of the Woods Sewer Board had to take action by the county council to uh, establish that and get things moving. So there was many meetings and. It got down to, to, to the one big one, and, and the president of the county council said, John, she said, uh, uh, would you chair this meeting today? She said, this project is in, in your district, and you've been working with it. So she, I said, well, okay, okay no, I'll, I'll chair it. I mean, I had the beginners on one side, and I had the people for it on the other side. and. Um, we put a wide aisle in there because we want to keep it apart. And, and we, we were discussing this thing. It went on and on for some time. And I finally, some lady stood up and, and she said, Mr. Zen, she says, what makes you such an expert on the Lake of the Woods? I thought a minute and I said, ma'am, I want to tell you something. I lived there for 10 years. I probably drank more lake water accidentally than you did out of your tap. <laughs> and uh, she didn't. She didn't think I was too smart. She didn't. Want to <laughs> but uh, we uh, we had a vote then, and uh, uh, I, I told the people. I said I will recommend to the county council. However, this vote comes out. And we had two people on this side counting votes, and we had two people on this side counting votes of the fire station out there. 
and, and I, I thought, well, I got myself in a pickle here, and I, I, I couldn't win because somebody's going to lose. But <coughs> I held true to my word, and they, they, they voted in favor of it by a slim margin. And I, uh, I recommended the council that it be established, and um, it's, it's the best thing that ever happened to the Lake of the Woods, I'll tell you that. And uh, uh, another thing that, that I was involved with, uh, Scott Grable, the former administrator of the hospital, came to me one day and he said, how about you know Dick Luger? I said, well, uh, Senator Luger and I are on first name basis. What do you need? And he said, there is a committee that uh, um, I, I think it was the 96 committee, I don't know. But anyway, we, we needed to get on this list for funding for the hospital, uh, the grant and everything. And it had to be done in Washington. And, uh, and Dick Luger was on that committee. So I called Dick's office and, and talked to him. And he said, I'm going to give you to Marty Morris. Marty was the, the uh, his right hand man, the chief of staff. And uh, Marty and I still stay in touch together. And I haven't talked to him for some time, but we still stay in touch. And he said, uh, I told Marty all about it. And so, uh, Marty said, let me get back to you. And so he called me back in, in, in a few hours. And he said, John, he said, we're going to put you on, not only going to put you on that, on that list for funding, he said, we're going to put you to the top of the list. And uh, so that's part, part of the funding of the grants uh, and the loans for the hospital came to be. Uh, I think it was low interest loans and grants, but uh, it, uh, it came from the Uber's office. And I was, I was commissioner at the time, county commissioner, and I, I told Scott, I said, you work with uh, the town board to get the curb put in, and I will, uh, I will get the road paid for you. Because it was still a county road at that point in time. And so uh, uh, that happened. We got the road paid, and they got the curbs in, and everything. And uh, I, um, that's, that's just another one of the, the sticks that I had that time. Uh, when the bypass was going in, uh, the State Police Board, which I was a member of the State Police Board at that time, I served on that position for. 16 years, Doc appointed me, then or appointed me, and, and so I was I was there 16 years, and I uh, they were looking at building a new state police post, and the powers to be within the state police organization was was looking at that trucking building that, as you remember, used to be out of La Paz, and it was on the low ground and had mildew about yay high up on the wall, and I, they, they were looking at that, and I said, oh, this, this can't happen. So I called Doc. I said, Doc, I said, where do you want your state police post to put? And he said, well, he said, what's, what's Indianapolis looking at? And I told him, he said, oh, that can't happen. And he said, do you have somebody that, that we cut up their farm, or we, we took ground, uh, from them to build the bypass, he said, would that, would that uh, be a possibility? And I said, you yeah, I, I think, know, I think we can find somebody. So I got to looking at that thing and it was, the ideal position was where it's located at now. They're on Miami Road in 106. And uh, it was Jack Hankey's drone. And Doug Miller was doing the, the rental or the, the real estate portion of the thing for him, and he, Doug. Many of you know Doug. He was quite a worrywart. I mean, he, 
he worried about whether the sun was going to come up or whether it was going to go down and anything else. And then he get he come in and he said, John, he said, those those colonels say they, they, they want to go to that Lopez building. I said, Doug, I want to want to tell you something. I said, the colonels don't vote. I said, the state police board votes on that thing. And I said, my other five members on that state police board will follow my direction on where that location of that state police post is going to go. So that's due to, to, to Doc, me and the governor, and uh, having a stake on the state police board. Uh, we, uh, we found a place for it, and it was, it was it's good. Uh, you know, in, in today's politics, people are they're 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 antagonistic. They're they're constantly fighting and everything. Uh, Twenty-one years as party chairman, I never ran a negative ad. Uh, I don't like negative ads, but they run them because they work. But uh, I, I as party chairman, never never ran one. I didn't feel that I had to because I always felt I had the better candidates. And, and, and that's what it boiled down to me, was, was finding the right people, or the right people finding me as party chairman to, uh, to sign that up for candidates. I, I've, got, I've got some, some good friends in, in, in the Democrat Party, Bob Kovach, who was the mayor of Mishawaka, and also he was the state senator. And when Frank O'Bannon was elected governor, Bob uh, Bob went to work as the chief of staff for for uh, O'Bannon. And I uh, one time uh, there there was a young man that. that was in the position that uh, Trent Wally's in now. That was supposed to be working on a grant and everything for the town. And he followed up, didn't get it done. And he went to the state or went to the town board meeting that night. And they said, "Okay, eight o'clock in the morning, we want you over to Jensen's barber shop to see what he can solve for you out of this deal." So he came over, he was there at 8 o'clock, and uh, I said, tell me all about it. He did. I said, okay. I called my friend Kovach, and uh, he said, I'll get back to you. And he got back to me a few hours, and he said, well, he said he didn't get things filed on time. I said, Bob, is there anything we can do to salvage this thing? He said, well, let me, let me think about it. Took a couple of days and he come back and he said, John, he said, we got a better deal for you. So I, I put him in touch with the, the young man that works for the town and I forget what his name is now. He wasn't here very long after that debacle. And, uh, but uh, Kovach, Kovach helped him out, got him off the hook on that one and, and uh, uh, we got the grant money for whatever it was at the time. Um, Butch Morgan, many of you remember about Butch. Um, he's the one that's, that got sent to the slammer for forging the signatures on the uh, congressional. Uh, uh, you have to have so many signatures in each congressional district to get somebody on on the state ballot. Um, my friend Butch, he. Uh, he decided that, I think he probably just went to sleep on the thing, and he decided that uh, we can get this done. And I, I think, I don't know that Butch actually signed some, but he had his people doing it, and they forged signatures, and, and uh, it ended up with, with Butch uh, taking the fall on the thing, and, and he spent some time in the slam. But, but, Another story on Butch, Jackie and I was out for for dinner one evening in Mishawaka and Butch came in the restaurant, come over and sit down with us and we talked. 
and uh, he said, you got any political signs in the, in the car? I was running for recorder. And I said, yeah, why? He said, I want one of them. I said, now, Butch, what are you going to do with my sign? He said, you'll see. He said, I'm not, it's not going to cause you a problem. So I took Butch at his word. He gave me, I gave him the keys. He went out and got his sign. <coughs> And uh, he showed up about a week or so later, maybe 10 days. He had a dozen magnetic signs, yay big, to put on cars for my company recorders race. Uh, and and we, he and I would go to lunch or dinner after, uh, after one of the, 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 the election. Uh, more than one time, really. He and I walked into Pat's Bar in La Paz for noon lunch, and uh, Tom Langdon was there, the owner. He kind of shook his head when he saw us coming in together, and he said, uh, he said, I can't believe this. He said, this isn't the odd couple, I'll miss my guess. Because <laughs> Butch was about this high and this wide, and I'm, I'm this high and this wide, and, and different political uh, faith. And, and, uh, but here we are, we buried the hatchet after the election, and um, we, we went to lunch together numerous times. Um, and, and, and I still come, Butch is a friend. I, I think he fouled up because uh, it should be no no problem at all getting 250 signatures, Democrat signatures in St. Joe County, but I think he just procrastinated and didn't get it done and uh, that caused him a problem. Uh, one of the other things, the, the Symes Tyson race, Jack Symes and Dick Tyson ran against each other and both good friends of mine. Uh, we we had that that caused me some real real hard age because here again I was on the county council and we had people from the signs group calling me and saying, John, we need Jack Signs back in there. I had people from the Tyson group calling me and said, John, put Dick Tyson back in there. We need him back in there. Now, I was friends of both of them, and, but I had a job to do as, as party chairman. I had a job to do as president of the county council. Uh, and that was to, to deliver for, for my party. And that was uh, selecting Dick Tyson as sheriff again. So that that happened then I uh, it got down to to that one tie boat and, and and so it had to be settled by the county council the uh, that 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 caused me a little problems I the the Democrats uh, uh, filed for in courts for investigation because after the election I was sitting there with the vote totals in front of me in the clerk's office looking at them and and I never went in until after the votes were all certified because I knew that if I did that would cause me trouble so I I, I, I was sitting there looking at the vote totals that were certified and some of the Democrats come in and they saw me what I was doing I was just looking at them and they, they decided that I might have been changing votes. Uh, and I didn't, uh, uh, didn't change votes. I don't, I, don't, I don't practice that theory or anything. I couldn't have changed them anyway because they were all certified. And uh, they, uh, they took it, they got an investigation from the judge. He appointed uh, a commission, and there was some on this side, and some on this side that he appointed, and they found uh, that nothing was done illegally. Uh, and uh, uh, 
so we got on got on with that. Um, the uh, in in that particular incident, there was a fellow that lived out at the lake, and Don was his first name. Looked down at the south end of the lake, right at the dam. I don't remember what his last name is. I mean, that's, I slept since then. And uh, he uh, he came into my barber shop, got a haircut, and I was still burning over this thing that they would challenge the, uh, that. And so I, I I cut his hair and I stepped outside the barber shop. When he got ready to leave, and I sat down, I said, I want to talk to you. So we stepped outside, and he said, what's up? I said, Don, I didn't appreciate what you guys did uh, to, to the party and to me uh, on, on that road count. And I think maybe it'd be best if you found a different barber. Because I said, you don't want me behind you with a razor. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Consequently, uh, that was the last time I cut Don's hair. Uh, we we did we did play golf together a number of times after that, but uh, that was uh, one of the one of the kickbacks on that. And, uh, another Democrat that I, I I'm, I'm friends with uh, was was Cliff Allen. And I, Cliff came over from Star County, and I heard all these stories about Cliff Allen and, and Star County. And I don't know what am I getting into here to become a friend of Cliff? Well, uh, Cliff, Cliff and I are, are very good friends. He he lays it right on the line. He's outspoken. Uh, in fact, when I bought the condo, uh, Cliff came over with with with. A little elephant about the high. and uh, I wasn't home at the time, and he left it with Bonnie and Ronnie, and uh, um, so Ronnie brought it over. We put it on my front porch, and I got this this heavy ceramic elephant sitting on my front porch yet as of today, and uh, but uh, that, I thought that was something that this. Democrat would bring me an elephant. And, and Cliff, Cliff and I still get together. We probably had lunch together maybe a month ago. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I just had so many, so many great experiences uh, in the barber shop and in the political uh, arena that uh, I. I, I, I consider myself a very, very fortunate person. Uh, and it all goes back to that, that day in Doc Bones' basement down there in his office uh, when, I, when we took our daughter in and uh, had got the ball rolling. And from, from there, I, I, I had all these experiences and, and, and plus, plus many more. Some of the some of the attaboys I've got over here, um, uh, the information or the the plaques from the the uh, Sagamores of the Wabash, uh, two electoral votes, uh, and uh, uh, a thing that this resolution that the uh, state police board wrote up for me. Um, a uh, picture from Dick Ruger signed to uh, Zenson's Barber Shop, Friends of Zenson's Barber Shop. And one thing that I really cherish is a, is a handwritten letter from Dick Ruger when I resigned as, as, as party chairman. And uh, feel free to look at them and, and, uh, uh, and, and I'll, I'll gladly answer any questions that, that you have. Oh, I would like to have you tell them about being your favorite Democrat of memories. Oh, <laughs> Evelyn and I, we, we went down to Florida and we saw Mary Has, and 
course, Mary was a Democrat. And Mary had scrapbooks that, that not only was the Democrat clippings, but the Republican clippings as well, from her years in, in politics. And Mary, uh, Mary and I talked probably for probably several hours about politics, going through the books and everything. And uh, she said, you know, she said, I think I'm going to make you my favorite Republican. <laughs> I said, no, wait a minute, Mary. I said, who was your favorite Republican? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, Diane Farr. I said, well, she died. I don't want to be your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Mary, Mary is quite a gal. <laughs> Anybody that, that, that knows, knew Mary, uh, Mary has, uh, Mary Stoller, uh, realized what a jewel she was. I mean, she, she was, she was good. Any other question? How much were you charging for your first haircut? Do you remember? I do. I started cutting hair. The first job I had was in South Bend. I started cutting hair for dollar fifty and a head. <laughs> Uh, when I back and back to, to Bremen, I think I think we were getting a dollar and a quarter then done, and and so um, that was I started up there in in, in 1957, Barbara the year, and back and opened up up here in 1960, 64, and we went to a buck and a half then. And uh, so, I mean, it, 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 the, the haircuts didn't change as far as what I was able to get from South Bend and, and a number of years later to, 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 to but, uh, Just for a bit of information, for those who have gone through the History Center or those who haven't, we have John's barber pole running every day that the History Center is open. And it's been running and <laughs> continues running. However, we did have to repair it at one point. I think Roger and I worked on getting it to run. So if you want to see his barber pole, it's there. The, uh, the barber pole, uh, that's, that's got to be history in itself because I don't know how long Pat had it. He was down um, where the east end of Kuntz's Hardware is now, in a shop there. And then he moved up here and brought that barber pole with him. And I don't, I don't know how long he had it. And I know I had it 30 years. And it, um, <laughs> it got repaired a number of times. <laughs> it's really got a unique motor in it. To drives it. It has a very unique motor in it that drives it. Yeah. Um, but any? I'd like to know how you coped with the changeover in the 1970s or so when when men started going to hair salons. When what? When men started oh, going to okay. hair salons. Uh, we didn't cope well. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't cope well. I, uh, to this day, I mean, I blame the Beatles. <laughs> the, the, the Beatles brought the long hair to, to, to the States. And, uh, and a lot of that is, is the barber's fault. I know, speaking for myself anyway, that if I would have gone into the hairstyling business versus uh, buzzing them off, uh, Probably a difference of six, eight dollars at that time uh, on, on haircuts, uh, and I should have, I should probably have gone uh, into the styling thing, and, and but I didn't do it. Uh, one of the instructors in barber school uh, encouraged me to go to, to to beauty school before I, when I got out of one, go to the other one uh, because of. Evidently, he could see down the road enough that, that he felt that it would, would be to my benefit. But 
and he and I were good friends, and, and um, we we did the town of time work uh, <clears throat> Last time I was here, I got an award from the Air Force Association from Dr. Hassel. So I thought today I'd show up and get a haircut. <laughs> but, but we're in the wrong building. We need to be next door. You know. But uh, it, 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 I, like I said, it, I, I'm just so fortunate that the things that I've been able to do and, and enjoy doing, um, I, a lot of it couldn't, there's no way that I could do it without the support of my family. Um, I, I was, when Doc decided to run for governor, I had people come to me and they encouraged me to run for his house seat. Well, my, the reason, the reason I didn't even consider is, is because of my family. I mean, you're, you're going so much time, take so much time down there. And, and my daughter was young. Uh, I had a business that, that, that didn't generate money when I wasn't there. Uh, so uh, I, 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 I didn't consider that very far, I'll tell you that. But it's not that I wouldn't have liked to, but there's times that you, you don't, uh, you, you, you got to give up what you like to do and what you need to do. Were you involved in the bicentennial uh, celebration activities? Uh, I was. I was co-chairman at that doing alley at night, and uh, I, I, I forgot all about that. Huh? <laughs> um, but uh, that was that was was a lot of fun. We had we had a good time doing that, and uh, you could ask for a better co-chairman doing alley at we, we had a lot of things going on at that point in time with that, that thing. Any other questions? It must be really rewarding for you to look back now on all these things that you accomplished in your in your lifetime. Yeah. It's well, when I look at the, at the attaboys over here, I got I. I <laughs> yeah, it, it's touching. It's it's. It makes me feel good. And uh, when I drive by the state police post, or when I go out and drive around the lake and I see the, the new homes and the remodeled homes out there that, that transpired because of the, the uh, sewer board uh, election. Uh, and, but if it wouldn't have been me, it could have been somebody else. And, I, I enjoyed it. Anything else? No question? No? Well, no, at, 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 your, at your wife's viewing at Mishler's. Pardon? At your wife's viewing at Mishler's a number of years ago. Yeah. I turned around and there's Joe Donnelly. Joe Donnelly? Really? <laughs> so. He was, yeah, I was startled to see the man come. I thought, well, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I, I, gonna... I, I, I failed to mention that, I, and it wasn't intentional, but uh, Donnelly and Butch Morgan showed up to my wife's mm -hmm. viewing down at the, at the funeral home. Right? And, and my, my, my Democrat friends and I, I mean, we, we'd go at each other pretty hard during the election. Uh, and, and leading up to it and everything, but uh, once it was over, we buried the thing and, and got on with it. And uh, it's just, uh, to me, to me, that's the way Washington should be working instead of the antagonistic views that they each have today. Um, and maybe it can't be done up there, I don't know, but, but it's, I, I, I felt very comfortable with, with how I handled the political thing and, and uh, uh, not running any 21 years. I never ran that negative bad and, uh, because I always felt I had the best candidates and, and uh, they worked the hardest and, and uh, 
we had one of the first uh, elections. Uh, we didn't we didn't know what to do. So come parade time, uh, we put our candidates on bicycles, and uh, they they rode up and down the parade out on the bicycles, and we had Doc and Beth on uh, uh, a bicycle built for two, and uh, they 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 seemed to enjoy it. They they come out and wanted to practice a while. <laughs> Before that, they didn't, didn't want to fall over on the on the parade route. So, but uh, yeah. Any other questions? This is just a comment. Being from across the county line in um, the big city of Wyatt, had Fritz, Shemira, and the Barber. No telephone. I was surprised. Uh, but my grandfather would go in and yes, what kind of conversation? The same as what he had there. And uh, I, I'm kind of not kind of. I'm really impressed at all these things because I didn't know. I mean, I forget his name. He's a barber. Yeah. But my friend. Well. Will you be my friend? I am <laughs> <laughs> across the political line. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you can say, my dear friend. <laughs> we, uh, you know, the, the Fritz, Fritz ran a good barber shop up there. He did it for years and, yeah. and uh, I just, yeah, it was, it, it, it's a tough business and uh, it, it's very time consuming. Uh, it's very, it's very hard on one's body. Uh, uh, two knees later and a hip later. Uh, the knees are fine, but the surgeon screwed up, pardon my French. The surgeon messed up the, the hip and that's the reason for Walker, but uh, I think a lot of it was because of my genes and also the uh, thing in my neck barber chair for all of the year. And, uh, so I, but uh, if I had to do over again, I, I don't know that I would have changed anything. Well, maybe one thing. Howard Sylvie had a job lined up for me with NIPSCO and I passed it up because I just got a job with, with uh, Package Masters and I didn't feel right in working two weeks and, and pulling out of there to go to work for NIPSCO. Probably one of my bigger mistakes that uh, I ever made in, in my life is not going to work for NIPSCO. But uh, uh, had I done that, None of the rest of this stuff would have transpired. So, yeah. We're just passing around a, a, a picture I have of uh, Dick Luger and some of the other Republicans on those bicycles that you mentioned. Oh. Uh, they're right here on the Florida Street. Yeah, I forgot about Dick being on the bikes that day. <laughs> that was 1974, I believe. Yeah, well, I hope I didn't bore you too much with my. my leaves, I want to uh, acknowledge someone that's sitting here that just celebrated his 100th birthday yesterday, Bill Butler. I'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Bill. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to remind you that you can see Bill talking about the history track that he gave on the internet. All you have to do is go on the internet and he's there and he tells about 
how many tanks did you lose? <laughs> I want five. <laughs> one five, right? Oh, one was double trouble, and the other was coffin filler. <laughs> I don't remember the others. So we can go and listen to his talk.